So I rarely come out from behind the safety of my camera. But this is a special case. While searching through the treasures of Zaza's Antique Emporium in York, New Salem, I came across several musical instruments. Talking with the owner, he uh, showed me his secret stash. Amongst that secret stash was this little find. My first thought was that it must be some kind of novelty horn. I expected it was old, but I didn't know how old. And it just, its style, you know, was reminiscent, obviously, of a cornet, but it just was completely different. Um, not the least of which is the valve configuration. I did some Googling on the Richardson Company, the manufacturers of this horn, finding only one reference in the entirety of the internet to this particular horn and very little on Richardson and Company. Rob Stewart was where I found the reference. He did a gorgeous restoration of what was at the time the only known existing horn of its type, which I guess makes this the second. And this one being a lower serial number, but anyway. A little bit about its history. Suspiciously, it looks an awful lot like a Graves and Company horn, who, by chance, maybe, Richardson worked for before starting his own company. I guess uh, patent laws weren't as strict back then. Anyway, Richardson only made these horns from between uh, 47 through about 51. So, if I count my fingers correctly, that puts this somewhere around 170 years old. That explains the unusual valve configuration. At that time many horns still had pads like a saxophone and they were considered post horns typically. They hadn't, con they hadn't settled on a valve style at that time uh, for that matter or what a trumpet would look like. Uh, obviously you know the coronets probably evolved from this particular horn and then trumpets later. This valve design, the Vienna valve, is a double piston, and I will show some other shots of it, but a double piston uh, configuration. So one piston in, one piston out for each valve. Now that became popular in the early 1800s and was then ultimately replaced typically by the rotary valve. And then the rotary valve was replaced in the later 1800s by the single piston valve. Uh, the rotary valve seemed to be making a slight resurgence, if I might say, uh, by the Chagrill Music Company in Austria. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the Minozal Brass and uh, the celebrities behind it. So, it needs some work. I was able to get number two and three working very nicely. Uh, number one, not as much. Uh, there's a Menchie Music Company in Hanover, Pennsylvania that I'm going to have, I think, look at the first valve. I've got it working, but I'm cheating using an extra external spring. Don't tell uh, the guys at Menchie. But uh, I, I do want to make it functional. That way I can use it uh, as I volunteer for Beagles Across America playing at funerals. So. I want to get it functional at a minimum, but I haven't decided if I want a full restoration, um, which I would probably have uh, Mr. Stewart do. I just can't decide what condition or what modifications I feel comfortable with making to it. I'd like to keep it as original as possible. If you feel like commenting below in your opinions, I'd love to hear them. Um, because its current condition is part of the horn's history as well. I just I, I want it to be leakless and, and functional is my primary concern. Uh, from here it will probably end up going into a museum so that's, that's its destiny most likely. Well, enough talking. Let's see how it works. Again, largely functional. First, let's hear its pitch. You can hear right off the bat that even though that low C, everything is open valve, way flat. So it should be interesting. You may recognize the songs I'm going to play, but you may not know the beautiful arrangements written by Jim Niederer. 
Uh, he wrote these for the Echo Taps Trumpet Choir, uh, members of Bugles Across America, to perform on Armed Forces Day at Fort Indian Town Gap National Cemetery in Pennsylvania. So, and if all goes well, we're going to hear multiple voices and, uh, and I'll overdub them. So here we go. Forgive the in-air metronome. some significant intonation issues, not to mention I don't play that often, but it does work. Okay, you have to agree that Taps has likely been played on this horn several times in its lifetime, but for the sake of creating history, we're going to do something that I can almost guarantee this horn has never done before, and that is riffing the blues. So, let's riff some blues. Right off the bat, we have a problem. Tiny bell. We'll just get rid of that. Okay, let's riff some blues. Seventy years old. Thank you for watching.